this just, uh, I'm going to continue in the same vein that the apostle has been teaching us in lately, and that was he first started on unity, and then he started hitting us with the silent killer of um, unforgiveness and bitterness, and Pastor David, Harold Jackson were following up along those same lines about the glory of God and the fruit of the Spirit and some other things to refocus and to influence us how to stay focused and who God is. And I'm going to continue to stay in that same vein because it really hasn't impressed upon me that who we are, but so oftentimes things, we forget who we are. And as I think back scripturally, even from the beginning of time as we know it, even the Lucifer or the devil or the Satan himself, he was recreated for purpose. We were created for purpose and some destiny. But something happened even with the angelic beings. God gave, uh, gave them choice just like he gives us choice. And we can choose. We make choices every day and we can choose to do right or we can do do wrong. Lucifer chose to do wrong. This is why we're in the shape we're in today. Just because he was able to deceive Adam and Eve in the garden. This is how sin fell upon the foundation of the earth and into humanity. But Jesus came and died on Calvary and gave us a hope. Huh? And he said, Father, forgive them. <laughs> well, they know not what they do. Isn't that powerful? So the foundation of what we believe is based on his love and forgiveness. Regardless of what you do to me and I do to you, you are obligated and mandated to still love me. Ain't no like. To love. You are mandated. To forgive me. Ain't no try. Because we've been taught unforgiveness is a what? S-I-N, a sin. And if we look at the history of humanity, and maybe some of your own history, you've been holding on to stuff for a long time. Mama, daddy, grandma, grandma, granddaddies. For generations, stuff had been passed down about other family members and different folks in the street. And they taught you at an impressionable stage around three years old. And they said between three and seven is the most impressionable stages to start grooming kids about who they are. How you want to formulate in them their mindset. Why do you think kids come up with hate? These hate groups, they put it in them kids real early. This is why when they see people to, that don't look like them, act like them, they hate them. And you not did anything to them. Hey! But when Jesus died on Calvary, I ain't, I ain't read nothing in scriptures that it for what nationality, what color, nothing. He died for all humanity, which tells me all humanity is mandated and commanded to love and forgive. And if you're not being taught that, you're in the wrong church. 
Something's wrong. And this is why you have to examine yourself. Let me go to Scripture. First Scripture, I want to go to Romans. Romans 8, 35. Verse out of there. Who shall separate us from the love of God? We gonna let bitterness separate us from the love of God? Yeah. Are we gonna let a lie separate us from the love of God? Are we going to let gossip separate us from the love of God? Are we going to let tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sore separate us from the love of God? See, this is personal. You've got to ask yourself, am I going to let any of these things separate me? From the love of God? Now, you say you love God, but the word of God tells me if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So if you don't keep his commandments, you're a liar. And the word of God says all liars will have their parts in the what? The lake of fire. See, this salvation is nothing to play with. But we're allowing society Hollywood and all these different type of media platforms to trick us that we can act any kind of way, talk any kind of way, do any kind of way, and still talk about I'm a Christian. Everybody you talk to a Christian. Whoremongers, Christian. Dogs is Christian. Fornicators and adulterers is Christian. Liars is Christians. Shacker uppers are Christian. Alcoholics is Christian. Everybody want to be a Christian. And the first thing they tell you, well, don't you judge me. That don't scare me from talking to you. Because the word tells me by their fruits, hey, you shall know them. See, I'm a, I can be a fruit inspector and tell you about yourself. Hey. Huh? So you can take that argument to somebody else, but that's the first thing they want to tell you. Uh, the Bible don't say I don't judge. The Bible tells us to judge righteously, and we judge righteously according to the word of God. All I got to do is take you to the word. But see, a lot of times we get up and run and pack up. Well, yeah, you right, see. They won the argument. They ain't, ain't one nothing. Matter of fact, if you just tell them about the old nasty life a lot of y'all used to live. You know, I ain't put myself in that. <laughs> but you know, we live some nasty lives. Think about it. We live some nasty stuff we ain't going to tell nobody. We'll tell people up to a point, <laughs> and then uh, I ain't going to say that part because they may not want to deal with me no more. Oh, they, uh-uh, they might not want to shake my hand and hang out with me. Oh, no. Think about it. See, this is real stuff. This salvation we have is real. And John 10, 10 said, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come to them, I have life, and life, what? More abundantly. That's why all this media stuff, it ain't too good for you. Planting stuff. And we've been taught it's that thought. He plants a thought. And then you start thinking. 
And then you get hanging around with the wrong crowd, and then they, 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 they start the same old philosophies and idiosyncrasies that the world is saying you say. And the, then before long, you talking that same old garbage talk that the world's talking. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with this. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Shug. You know, you know it ain't right. You know what God saved you from. And if he saved you from that, why you want to go back to it? Hello? See, I've been there, done that. Got the victory. I got to the place that people wanted to run with me. I had to quit running with them. Because they was influencers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't had to cut some doctors loose. Because they was eyeballing me too much. I told my wife, too. See, you got to know. See, sometimes you just got to run. You don't entertain certain stuff. Even in my professional life, I allow my wife, yeah, you, I don't got no secret code that she don't know. I ain't, I ain't got no code that said don't pick up my phone. For what? Because it keeps me in check. I ain't got nothing to hide. Ain't nothing that private calling me on that, on that, that thing. That at the time I can't run. That she can't answer. I ain't get no tic-tac-toe text or none of that that she can't read. Matter of fact, I like for her to look because sometimes I don't look because she can remind me of my doctor appointments and stuff. Because she's my caregiver. See, eh? see, but we get secrets. And then that's how the adversary sneak in. They start eyeballing you. You start kind of reverting back to your old self. Too smooth for your good. Hello. My wife told me, you can't tell everybody they look good and they smell good. Because they take it the wrong way. In my professional life, you can't go around talking about it. Go see, church folks just huggy duggy folk. She said, You can't hug everybody. A lot of women take it the wrong way, a lot of men take, <laughs> take it the wrong way. I had an HR told me, Mr. Kenner, you can't do that. Mr. Kenner, you, that's their space. Yeah, but that's just how I know. Miss Kenny ain't, ain't, they ain't got nothing to do with nothing. How you are. That's their space, and you just can't be touching people like that. So you see, there's some patterns of society you have to learn just to protect yourself. Get bullheaded and crazy if you want to. But it can come back and bite you. As it is written, for our sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted the sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, regardless of what you're going through, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved. See, when you know who you are. See, sometimes we forget who we are. And when you forget that the power that you have within yourself, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Why? Because I got the power of God down on the inside. I am somebody. I am a royal priesthood. I am a particular person. I'm an extraordinary. You might be ordinary, but I'm extraordinary because I got Jesus. You can't compare me with you if you ain't got Jesus. You think you better than me? Well, you said it. 
I ain't got to say nothing. Oh, you think you better than me. Well, all you got to do is smile at them keep rolling. <laughs> ain't no sense trying to argue with folks because they see something in you. And because they see something in you, people get bitter. They get jealous. Oh, I'm going to bring him down. I'm going to bring her down. She thinks she's somebody. He, he thinks he's somebody. He ain't all that in a bag of chips. That's what you say. But I tell you what, you better not touch his anointing. Because you'll find yourself getting jammed up in a situation that you won't get jammed up in. You know, I drive kind of slow sometimes. Wives get upset at me. Ugh. She make me nervous. She wants me to go fast, and I want to go slow. <laughs> but anyway, I had somebody... Give me the, you know, they was, man, they was really hot at me. <laughs> just waved at them. <laughs> I just waved and my business. But I could hear, see the expression on their face and their action. I felt sorry for them. I said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> Huh? Plus, even though I may have had caused it, they should have had Jesus. So see, if they had Jesus, they wouldn't have mind me going slow. They would have had more patience with me. Ain't that right? You know how y'all get sometimes, people going too slow? Get blowing your horn, flashing your light, upsetting people, getting them mad. Then you get rolling your eyes and doing all this so they can see you. Then you're throwing the bird. Because you got up late. I want everybody to move fast because you're late. Am I talking to somebody in here? You know how we get. But you see how we bring things on ourselves? And then when people respond to our actions, we get bitter. We get angry. We get mad. It can mess up your whole day. Then you walk into the job. Oh, how you doing? And you're just as grumpy as you can be. And ain't nobody did nothing to you. Just because you got up late, speed, and rushing, and wouldn't nobody let you pass them. For I am persuaded in neither death nor life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, nor height, no death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, nothing. Nothing. And some of the things that the apostles taught us was bitterness will destroy your spirituality, your prayer life, your chair life, your church life. Fellowship with saints, financially, socially, physically. Your family, you'll be all uptight. I mean, fame. Do that fame. And so oftentimes we can't draw our loved ones because we see, they see the hell in us. And we wonder why we can't draw them. We wonder why they won't come to church with us. 
We wonder why. We wonder why. Because behind the scenes, they say, well, they're supposed to be all that. Look how they act. Look how they talk. See, people watch us all the time. This is a part, folks, we forget. They watch. People watching us, and you don't even think they watch. Recall an incident when the Lord saved me, and I didn't even know they was where I was, but they would just watch. They said, I knew Kenner was different. He said he walked different. So you know when I seen him, I had to talk different. I didn't have that, that, that profanity lace mouth. We got preacher says, okay, to, to use strong profanity. Or they said, oh, it, we're just keeping it real. We just keep it 100. Trying to validate their nasty mouth. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. What happened to the newness? What happened to the new conversation? See, when it gets too easy, you, you, you need to go back down to the altar. Don't keep telling me, oh, I just, that's just me. No. Oh, that's just my service talk. No, uh-uh. 24 years, 5 months, and 20 days I spent in. But I knew how to adjust when Jesus saved me. I've been out long enough. I know there, there's a process. But I'm more than a babe. I ain't no babe no more. You can't keep calling yourself a babe. You talking about you been you had Jesus for 5, 10, 15 years? You ought to be off the milk bottle now. You ought to be running. You ought to be running for Jesus. But see, we make excuses why we want to still act the way we still want to act. God gave me a word, and I was just thinking about it, and the word he gave me was, when we don't operate in his will, We become dysfunctional. You hear that word dysfunctional? You act abnormal. Those who normally work in the social or medical field, a lot of times we heard it. You got dysfunctional family. You hate to hear that. In other words, you use that, I mean, your family all jacked up. You don't act like a normal family. You ever get a family, you can't have a gathering or they come together, all they don't want to do is fight, and acting a fool, and cursing. Everything would be going real nice. Then all of a sudden, they just explode. And you're just waiting for that one person to snap out because you know what's coming. And then, whoa, who invited him? I didn't. Did you? Well, you know better than inviting. You, sh you shouldn't have did it. Who, who, who told her about the, the cookout? You know, we all got family members like that. We all got some cousins. They come around, uh-oh. <laughs> you don't stand by. But any time we get outside of the will of God, you become dysfunctional. You're no longer in the will of God. And if you're not in the will of God, whose will are you in? I don't even got to tell you. So if you ain't on the Lord's side, whose side you on? That's why it's so important that even in marriages, 
You're letting that sun go down on your wrath. Sometimes you just got to, hey, look, I'm sorry. I know I've been married. How long have we been married? I'm going to see if you know. Do, do you? Huh? No. That ain't going to work. See? See? 49 years. That's, that's my fine wife. Hush! No, 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 no. Ain't she fine? She's pretty Asian. Huh? Thank you. She said, I love you. <laughs> See there? <laughs> huh? But see, you got to know how to work that thing. And so oftentimes, men, we want to blame it on the wife. But God gave me a revelation a long time ago. I'm responsible for the happiness of my house. Ain't up to my wife. I don't care what she go through. If I'm calling myself the priest, high priest, and the king of my house, he let me know I'm responsible for the happiness and the joy in my home. Regardless of what we are going through, But see, we like to do that, 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 that Adam thing. It's, it's her, Lord. She shouldn't have said that. She shouldn't have did that. Well, so what? If you want some peace, because a cat don't meow, the dog don't bark, and, and the bird don't chirp, and my daughter don't speak, and my grandson rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> So it ain't nothing right. So you might as well take the responsibility. <laughs> ain't that right, Brother Eric? That, ain't that, see, I told you. Men's ministry going to get him. Teach us a, <laughs> a class. Because <laughs> Brother Eric got it. <laughs> and just say, hey, look, honey, I'm sorry. Whatever I did or said, I confess. Let's keep rolling. Yeah. That's all. But see, you know what happens? Pride. We allow pride to get into our hearts. Bitterness get into our hearts. Anger. Malice. And you got a fight on your hand. And the longer you let stuff set, the longer it takes for you to heal from that. The longer you let it set and simmer, the harder it gets to say, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have did it. And this hits all age groups. It makes no matter. Because we forget who we are. Oh, that's just my nature. No, your nature's supposed to have been changed. Don't tell me it's your nature unless you still got that old nature. But when you got Jesus, you're supposed to have a, a new nature. Where's the newness? Where's the Jesus? And after a while, something ought to move. And marinate down on the inside and say, I got to get this right. Because tomorrow is not promised to none of us. But 
But we go through life as if we're going to live forever. How many of y'all know people that was okay one day, one week, the next day or the next week, you find out they are passed on? And the first thing out of their mouth, well, I didn't know what happened is just that quick. And then when you're gone, it's, it's the judgment. That's why our teaching here, it ain't a, hey, we don't play with this thing around here. You got to be for real with Jesus. Hypocrisy don't pay. Because if you get hypocrisy in here, sooner or later, it's going to touch you. I want to take you to um, Titus real quick. For we ourselves were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. We were sometime. In other words, see, we ain't always been like we say we are. But we got a new testimony. Let me tell you about what Jesus did for me. Once I was dead, but now I live. You know, those only picked me up, he turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. What a mighty God I serve. And sometimes you just been, when you think of the goodness and where he's brought you from, you just throw your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you see tears just running out of your eyes. Don't know what you're crying for, but you know you got Jesus. And when you begin to reflect back on your old nasty life, how you used to be, and you see how you are now. You said, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Woo! look where God has brought us from. Hallelujah. But we got to understand. We're going to make some mistakes in this life. But when we make them, we fix them. We don't dwell on them. We don't sit on them. We don't let them simmer. John 13, 34, 35 says, A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another, as I have loved you that ye love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one for another. See, when you got unforgiveness, that's not showing love. When you're showing love, you're humbling yourself. Just like Jesus did on the cross. He died for everybody's sin. Everything. Everything. I said everything. Everything. He died for it. Wiped the slate clean. And gave us a choice to choose life or death. But so oftentimes we, we, we enjoy the world so much that we don't want nothing to do with Jesus other than on Son. We don't want to live for Jesus. Other than the hypocrite on Sunday. But as we've been taught, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's 24-7. Because see, the spirit of God that we have in us is 
A lot of times we talk about the, uh, the, the disciples and, and of old. You know, back in the day, they didn't have no Holy Ghost. You talk about David and all of them, they didn't have no Holy Ghost. But they believed in what they believed. They had faith and they kept faith in what they had faith in. See, there's no excuse for us. Because, see, the Spirit of God in us and dwells in us. When you do something wrong, that Spirit of God, the Spirit in me, I'll say the Spirit in me of God, it let me know. Oh! You need to fix it. You know better than that. Sometimes I want to run my mouth too fast, and sometimes the Spirit of God, Shut it down. Hanging around the wrong folks. Up. Oh! Ain't good. It ain't that person ain't good. The spirit let you discern people. Certain people ain't good for us. How you gonna be single and you and you running around a running around with a player? You single, whether it be male or female, and you and you run around with a player, ain't got no kind of Jesus. His lips ain't holy, his hands ain't holy, his Bible, his body ain't holy. Come on now. Oh, he loved me. He loved what? You got the word of God said we are not ignorant of his devices. Ain't ignorant of his his, his devices. For well, the Spirit of God, and he lets us know. He said, I'll lead and guide you in what? Into all truth. Ain't that the word? Ooh. See that word to keep us if you let it. Let's go to Ephesians 4. And this is where the apostle was leading us from. And he mentioned that uh, the bitterness never stands alone. It always has the family members with it. Wrath and anger, glamour, glamour, slander and malice. Wrath. Violent, explosive rage, anger, his rage imploded down normally down on the inside. See that you ever find yourself in any of these categories? See, the word of God, it tells us right here. You find you got some of this stuff in you. You need to fix it. Glamour, uncontrollable. Temper tantrum, shouting and yelling. Your outburst. You won't know, a lot of times you won't know why you hollering and screaming. Now you can blame it on a lot of stuff. Maybe you have mental problems. Say a lot of times you need professional help. But don't go to somebody having the same problems you got. Yeah, 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 I got the same issue. But no, it'll pass. No, sometimes it don't pass if it's generational. And if you don't try to fix it. And if it's been handed down and passed down and passed down. And you got folks that you can't stand in your family. You can come say praise the Lord and visit me, but you can't visit your own family. Something wrong with that, y'all. There's something wrong with it. 
And you got to examine yourself. There's something wrong with that. And they asking you, well, why they don't never invite me to their house? And they invite you and, and you too cold and callous to go. Well, maybe that's an invitation that they're trying to break the ice. They're trying to break that fertile ground up. They're trying to show some love. And this is their way of doing it. Invite me. If I go, I ain't going to eat nothing. Because they watching you see what you're going to eat too. Just pray over it. Let the other folks eat it first, and if they ain't dropping, you all right. <laughs> if they ain't dropping, ain't that right? If they ain't dropping. If they ain't dropping, run into the bathroom, you okay. Thank you, Jesus. Slander. Just because you have this bitterness, you want to see them hurt. Dog them out, as we say, talking about it, saying all kinds of things about it. That's why on that Tweety D, Tweety Da, you got to be careful because you know that old fake stuff on there. You be passing on a bunch of lies if you don't research it. You're telling other people lies. Then you come out and find out you you passing a line. Well, you need to go back and say, hey, hey, sister, hey, brother, man, I, I, it wasn't true. It came out. That's why you got to stop passing all that old bum stuff. Read it, read it for yourself. You know the conspiracy theories. Hmm. Huh. People in the church believe in all kinds of stuff. Don't take this and don't take that. You know what the disciples Jesus had was a doctor? Y'all know Dr. Luke? Jesus, Dr. Luke and me, we good friends. I go see Dr. Luke. Jesus had Dr. Luke for a reason. Jesus could do the spiritual and the physical healing, deliverance, and miracles. But until Jesus did it, he gave us Dr. Luke to go to a doctor and see what's wrong with you. You set up in the house and die if you want to. I ain't going to die like no fool. I know a, a church renowned evangelist from one church organization I was with. And he said his wife would be alive today if he didn't listen. She didn't listen to the wrong I said, see, you listen to the wrong people. You know, ain't nothing wrong with doctors. I heard somebody just say that uh, the other day that uh, a lot of people died from the COVID. Well, they listen to the wrong people. We've been taking shots all our life. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm going to say shots ain't good for you. I mean, I mean, you still take aspirin, don't you? I mean, you research and see how, how they were tested. The other shots you've been taking all these years, how many of y'all talking about I need to research and see, see uh, how they was tested? All the other pills you've been taking, how they've been tested. Everything we take, it got a side effect. Every medicine, ain't that right? Right here, did she know? Everything you take got a side effect. Everything. Man, I said, this stuff got so much side effect, I don't even know if I want to take it or not. So you see how we get tricked 
into taking something that's, that's, that's really beneficial for us? I ain't telling you to take it or not take it. That's up to you. But I'm just saying over a million people died due to COVID. A lot of them died before they tired. And y'all might say, well, God won't take you before you die. Yes, yay. Yay. Go jump off that bridge. Go jump off the bridge. You tell me, is, is your time, did God call you home? Go get drunk, go 110 miles an hour and run into a pole. And tell me God called you home. You see how stupid thinking we get? Don't put God in everything. It's choice. It's choice. I'm getting ready to close. Putting away lying, evil speaking. Speak every man's truth for his neighbor, for we are members one another. If we members one, boy, we ought to be checking each other, not harming each other. And let me tell you something: you ain't gonna find no perfect church. There's not one perfect church here on earth. So go along with the program. I don't like this. I don't like that. So what? You ain't the only one may not like it, but I ain't going to rip and run. I know one thing. The apostle and the prophet of the house, there's sound doctrine right here. So what I'm going to get up tight and cry for and run? Devil is a liar. Why I'm going to mumble and grumble? Ain't none of us in here perfect. Well, I guarantee you, if I, if I put the right food before you and start talking about the wrong thing, you, I, I, you'll fall right in the conversation. Eating that whatever you like. Man, you right. Oh, man, this show is good. But now, what you say about that? Oh, man, you right. Boy. That's why you got to be careful when you're breaking bread. Now watch what you say. But see, we got to learn to uplift one another. And if we don't like it, so what? Go along with the program and make the program work. Just because I'm in charge of it, don't, don't, hey, don't, 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 hey. You don't got to take it all off on me. We all got instructions and we all like to see things done a certain way. But that don't mean we ain't going to get the same results. Ain't that right? Hmm? So be careful who you're talking to. All right, I'm getting ready to shut down. But let's not be dysfunctional. Let's continue to realize that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And we were created. And I seen something when Pastor Davis took us in the back for prayer. It said, I was created for purpose. It kind of stuck with me when I seen it back in the youth classroom back there. I was created for purpose. Saints, we were created for purpose. And one purpose was to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We are a light that's set up on a hill that the world can see. With all the darkness, the world sees a light. This is why a lot of times when the light comes into darkness, you walk into a room of darkness, you 
because we are the light. It radiates upon them and they see themselves because we being the light of God, the light of Jesus, they see themselves more clearly. So remember who you are. Because greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. And when you fall into these different things, you got a choice. You got a choice. God lets us know he'll, he'll put no temptation on you more than you can bear. But with the temptation, he'll make a way for you to escape every time. Every time. He ain't going to let you let you get hooked up in something that you can't get out of. But I'm going to close with this. Sometime to get to the next level, you got to get tested. Age has nothing to do with God wants to take you and me. Nothing. Moses is about, Moses about 80 years old when he went and told Pharaoh, let my people go. Look what Job went through. Look how God blessed him. Look at the blessed life you got already. How faithful is, hey, is our God. He's so faithful to us. And the only thing he requires of us is just do right. Live right. And when you mess up, fix it. Pastor David.